this is Cheryl and this is Bluegrass Dreams the Seams. Welcome back for another episode. I'm so glad you choose to join me today and uh, see what I have for you. It's not a whole lot today because I've spent so much time reorganizing my pattern storage and we'll get more into that detail a little bit later. First I want to talk a little bit about what I've been knitting because I have gotten back into my groove of knitting. It's taken me a while to feel like even picking that up again. Uh, I did some quick projects to try to get myself motivated. I do have some long-term sweaters that I need to get started or finished. I have two on the needles. One of them is my husband's sweater and uh, it's been on the needles for over a year. And the other one is a sweater I started for me back last summer with the intention that I'd wear it this past fall <laughs> didn't happen I will probably pick that back up in the spring and get it ready for fall of next year his sweater is going to be the next thing that I pick up and and try to finish hopefully he'll get to wear it a little bit before the winter weather is expired and we're into spring uh, first off is I did complete a pair of socks it's Navia yarn and the colorway was called hmm, something like Northern Lights, but not that. It's the other one, Aurora Borealis. And um, they're clearly different. The colors are the same. They're just not used in the same amounts in the yarn. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. If you're a knitter, you know that yarn can do two of things. It will either kind of strike or it'll kind of pull. I have one of each. <laughs> my yarn pulled, my yarn kind of striked. I have a little pooling here and there's a little bit of pooling in here, but nothing like I have on this sock. Now I knitted this sock first and at first I didn't like all the pooling, so I deliberately kind of placed my heel where when I'm wearing the sock you kind of get a nice little mix there so that's the front of the sock um, not that you're going to see it but well I see it so it kind of makes me happy this one looks the same to me every which way that's going to be in the front that'll be the leg I'll see and this is the back so it really doesn't look that much different but according to the label it should have been the same now granted the colors do match i mean no doubt but I, yeah the colors are the same so anyway i'll wear them my youngest daughter this morning texted me and said oh thank you for the new socks and i'm like oh, no <laughs> no 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 these are mine um i had had my eye on that particular yarn at house of yarn for quite a while they were down to the last two skeins and I bought them. Okay, the other thing I'm doing, I, I wanted to do Advent socks again, but then Arnie and Carlos decided to do an, a knit along uh, Christmas stocking. And every day they release six of the steps. Now you had to have your toe already finished before day one, so it's just going to be the color work that's going to be, um, I'm assuming, in day to day. 24 days of this. I'm almost finished with week. This morning I spent time getting caught up because I was nine rows behind because yesterday I was gone a lot. When I got home, I was just tired. I didn't feel like really printing it off or anything. I printed it off late last night. And then I thought, oh, you know, you still got the three rows you got to do. They're not that hard. So I finished those. And then the next morning, I, this morning, I picked it up and worked three rows and took a break and worked the final three. So here's what I have so far. It is Rowan yarn, and it's um, a white and emerald green, and I think it's ribbon red. I forget what the white is called, but anyway, this is mine so far. Now, I'm gonna hold it back because honestly, my stitching is not that good. Um, when you look at Arnie's, which he could be blocking his every day because they do a steam block like with the iron and a wet tile, towel, and it works wonderful. I've used it, but um, it makes the stitches all line up and they're just nice and pretty. Um, they look very even. 
and that's the way his looks and and mine I haven't done anything to it to block it so I'll hold it back you can see that here's the toe we, it is toe up and um, they're cast on for the toe I did not do that one because I thought here's an opportunity to learn toe up now I may regret that when they get they Carlos keeps hinting to a heel. But, you know, I could maybe knit straight up. We'll just see when I get there. If we do do a heel, I'll I'll try to figure out how to do it. I can knit it straight up. I don't have to work the heel. I don't guess. I could just keep on going. Hopefully. What I did for my cast on, though, here, because I really wanted to learn toe-up socks. I've been trying to do the toe-up cast on for a long, long time and never found a method I could do. So being determined as I am, um, I came home after trying to get my friend Linda to teach me again her method. And it's been a while since she's done it, so she was not able to really help me as much because it was hard for her to remember exactly. So I just kept trying to go through the directions. And after the sixth try, I gave up. I said, you know, I'm just going to enjoy my dinner and visit with you guys and, and have a good time because we probably won't get together again until after Christmas. So that's what went, what I chose to do. There was about six of us that night. And you know, that's more than we've had in a while in our little group. And so I, I just wanted to enjoy the company. So I came home and I started perusing the um, methods for toe up socks. And I came across the Turkish cast on little video. And I thought, gee, that looks pretty easy. So I did that and it worked, except I made one little boo-boo and I said, well, wait a minute, we'll just go back and start again. And when I went back and did it, this is my second attempt and it's like, you know, perfect in my opinion. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, look, I can do it. So now I have a cast on method that I can use, that I understand. And that probably explains why there are so many different varieties of cast ons for toe up socks. There's one for everybody. There's gotta be, or you create your own and become a pattern designer. Now my advent project or sock. And if, um, I think it's probably gonna be my stocking. The main thing I'm gonna be working on sewing related is I want to make this Berta pattern right here. And I wanna do this version. I'm going to take the French laces that I have, well not French, Swiss laces I have, Swiss embroideries, and I'm gonna create a yoke for the front and back. The collar part, for now, I'm not planning on using the collar, I'm planning on just like doing a little neck finish with the laces, and um, I'll still have the buttons going down the side. I'm also gonna have a lace cuff. So I have enough fabric to kind do linen-like um, cotton. And it is a bit on the sheer side. If I can find the, yeah, here we go. Here's the cut side. It is a little bit sheer. So it means that I will have to go ahead and make me a cami to go under it. I, you know, maybe it won't be quite that sheer, but I'm sure I'll feel more comfortable if I had a cami under it. So I will probably make one of my camis and um, I laid, I found those patterns and I, I do have some fabric bought up for that to make me one that's that's more white and one that's more ecru color. I went through this morning and I did pick out laces, so I have that already done. And now it's just getting it cut out. The first thing I'll probably do is make my fabric piece that'll be pin tucks or puffing or and with laces work through that whole block and then I'll cut the yoke pieces and get that put together the fronts but it really sounds complicated but actually it's something I enjoy doing I've been wanting to do this for a while and uh, take a more current pattern and give it a little bit of a Victorian flair pattern storage I did not like the way I had done my patterns which was basically put them in a binder put them in a, a uh, you know little sleeves you can buy for papers and it made the weight, the weight of the pattern was just pulling, and I couldn't get very many in a binder. I mean, you'd have to have a huge binder. So I had to come up with another solution. Finally, I decided, you know what, just buy four more of those fabric drawers that go with your unit over here, and 
buy some manila envelopes, which I'm buying a lot of them. I need to run out and go get some more. Like if it's one of the slimmer pattern packages. I can get two side by side. And then you see the backs also. So if I was to choose a pattern and say, well, you really don't have everything you need for this pattern. I might have the fabric, but I need some things at the store, which means a road trip because I, I rarely get anything here locally. I usually go Evansville or Nashville. So this weekend, for example, we're going to Nashville for the day. So I'll stop by Joann's and I can pick up my little buttons for this shirt because that's really the only thing I'm gonna need. So I, I can get, take care of that while I'm all out about in Nashville. Um, so these are like this. This is my Berta folder for garments. Not any outerwear, just garments. What did I do with outerwear? Well, when I got to sorting through, I realized I had a whole binder full of outerwear. Why not just take those out? The outerwear will be here. So if I wanted to make a coat or a raincoat or something, I would look in this binder only. Now this is sorted by pattern company. So I will have divider pages and tabs in this one. And all it's going to say on the, the back panel is outerwear. So ponchos, all that stuff, that's right here in this binder. Here's my package, see? For the little ones, it's like simplicity, new look. Uh, McCall's even fit in this. I just simply put the company, the number, and what it is. Now, this one's stretching its only, so I'm going to know that, but just to remind me. And then you got your directions and your pattern. So it's right down in there. And then in the drawers, so this, this storage unit right here that I have, excuse the miscellaneous stuff. There's where my binders will be, over here to the left. And then I've got tools in this center column of drawers. And then these start my patterns. So like my big Vogue patterns are put in long ways. They're in bigger envelopes. And you can see the name, the designer, uh, linen coat detail. It has coat. It has detail. And a full double uh, row. This is all the same company. So this one is all of my Vogue small patterns. I have a lot of Vogue. Yeah. No, that's Butterick on this side. So Vogue's on this side, Butterick's on this side. They are in there really tight. And but this one, because it's divided here, McCall's takes up all that room, and then this is Berta. This is my Berta pattern. So there you have it. That's what I've been doing. I spent three or four days working on just that much. I mean, the constant writing and slipping things out. Vogue's the big ones. I had to refold the patterns just to get everything in there nice and neatly. I didn't want it to be too bulky because I knew that I was going to be cramming it in there. So the thinner you can make your envelope, the better. That is it for me. Very short and sweet today. Um, I hope that you're enjoying your uh, December so far, that you've, um, you know, if you're not celebrating Christmas, you're preparing for whatever holiday that is coming for your, whether it's Hanukkah or uh, Kwanzaa, and there's a couple others. I think they said there's like five different holidays that are all kind of together this year in the same time period. So I hope that you're enjoying time with your family. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the time of preparation for these holidays. For me, it's going to be Christmas. And uh, my kids are all coming here, which is really nice. I hope that you're having a very, very good week. Enjoy your weekend wherever you are. And I will see you one day next week.